Well, all I know is the FBI, FBI had told me in the beginning when this happened that my brother was on a plane. He boarded this plane and, and then it took off and no one knows what happened to it. There were only well, days at, days after that, I had found out that uh, <clears throat> that the plane made all kind of crazy ground maneuvers before taking off. So that's telling me that he was hijacked. And then I later learned weeks later that someone went to the airport before my brother boarded this plane, paid 93,000 US dollars cash to have this plane fueled. Before, like I said, before my brother stepped on this plane. Now, and I have learned all through the years about different people from Al Qaeda that had been seen at this airport. So I really believe my brother had been hijacked. He was the only, there was himself and one other man. It wasn't like a, a plane full of passengers, right? There were only two confirmed people on the plane? Yes, him and John Matantu. Okay. A and, local, a person from, Con, from the Congo. Right. And I understand that, that along the line, you, you've been so frustrated in the lack of information. Um, there certainly was no search the way we're seeing now. And um, he was a suspect, I'm sure, for a, for a lot of this time. Yes, that's what I was told at one time. And uh, this is ridiculous, you know. I had to do all the things that I have learned, I've learned on my own through uh, talking to reporters and looking on the internet, doing my own research. But as far as our government, the U.S. government, did nothing to help me except one person at the State Department, that was Mr. Jack Markey. He was the only help I received. But our U.S. government did nothing as far as the search for my brother's plane. They had asked the African authorities for their help to locate my brother's plane. But as far as all the help that the, the passengers on this plane, their family members are lucky because they have almost the whole world searching for them for this plane. I, I didn't have that luxury. I, they, I had to do the searching myself. That must be an agony I, mo most of us cannot understand. Michael Verna, let's bring in, he is an aviation uh, trial attorney, won a $23 million settlement for the victims of Air Flight, uh, Flight 447, that Air France plane that went into the Atlantic. And, and Michael, when you, you hear this, this story here and you think about those folks in Beijing and in Kuala Lumpur and around the world, uh, what is it that they're going through emotionally, do you think? You've, you've seen the families ride this uh, emotional roller coaster. Uh, what, what is that like when the Australian government comes out and gives a lead like this? Oh, well, the, the grief is incalculable for these families. Uh, not knowing what happened to their loved ones is something that I don't think any of us can really imagine. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of the, the uh, Australian government coming out with this information, we have this problem where there's basically a conflict between this insatiable need to have more information and the lack of any reliable information. And those two sometimes conflict. Uh, the real impact of this that I've seen as a lawyer representing victims in these crashes is on the, the, the families themselves. They, their hopes get up and then their hopes are dashed. Then their hopes get up and their hopes are dashed. And in this particular case, I think it's very important to be mindful that there's two very significant legal questions uh, that exist here. Number one, was there even an accident? And then secondly, what was the cause of that accident? All we know is there's some debris some 1,500 miles off of Perth. Uh, we don't know if that's this airplane or not, but even if it is, all that does is give us an answer to the first question. Was there an accident? If we could identify that debris, of course, as being part of Flight 370. It still doesn't answer the question of why.